Hello, Mr. Dom Segalis. Uh, we're here at uh, the Yamaha Mo DX uh, booth. Yeah. Uh, saw you in New York last, yeah, which was great for the launch. Yeah, good to see you guys. Hi guys, hi to all the Sonic State fam. Uh, we're here at Synfest and uh, I'm here to show you a little bit of the Modi X. I mean, you'll probably already know quite a few things about it. I mean, you did a great video. And um, I want to start with uh, by playing a patch that's completely FM. And when you listen to it, you might think, oh, maybe that's more like a subtractive synthesis kind of patch. But I just want to show you what you can do with the FMX engine and the Modi X. Actually, hear all these kind of operators kicking in. Yeah, that didn't um, sound very FM. Yeah. Has it got some analog filter across that as well? No, it's actually completely FM, and uh, you can actually have filters on the FM engine on the Modi X, but this is because it sounds so kind of so toothy, because we have, compared to the DX7, for example, we not only have sine waves, but we have different spectral shapes. We have um, all, we have the odd. So it gives you different harmonics. This is more like a square, resonant, uh, and skirt value. So this actually gives you more like a sawtooth kind of uh, right, sound. So, yeah. And the fact that you have like eight operators now gives you all these kind of different uh, levels of control. You can use the super knob to control all those different things in real time. That's why this can sound like this in this position. And with the mod wheel, You can tell that that's not like subtractive yeah. synthesis anymore. And then with this one, I can just. Is that adjusting kind of feedback or something to add the brightness to it? You can actually check what's going on on every patch. It's very easy actually. You go control assign, and you can see that the super knob controls the skirt, it controls the uh, attack for our amplitude envelope, the operator frequency. So you can see you can even select the curve type right there and you can create your own user curves so basically it will determine how this will control all these different parameters. Yeah I wanted to talk to you about that because I mean the the, uh, the super knob it sounds you know it sounds like a gimmicky phrase and everybody's always talking about it yeah. but, uh, but everybody you talk to about it that uses it says actually it's really cool and I just wanted to you know how, how easy and how much assignment can you add to it I mean is it something you can show us? You can have up to 128 parameters at once with the super number and all of them can be controlled in a different way so let me show you actually it's very easy to actually the great thing is that now it's very easy to control it and assign things to it. I'm gonna start, let's start with a very simple patch. Let's go for a kind of um, a bass sound and kind of uh, analog style bass sound. Um, maybe this one. So this is like a very simple sound, just one part. Of course, the Modix can have up to 16, one, 16 parts in a DAW and up to eight parts can be played in real time. But let's say you wanna go into this sound and edit it. Um, let's say I want to go to element number two and I want to select uh, the filter, cut off. You will see once I do this, I get this little button uh, illuminating right there. So I can control assign and now I can select where to assign this parameter. I can assign it to a motion sequencer, I can assign it to envelope follower so I can have basically like an audio source modulating the filter or anything like that or I can select the super knob and now it's you will see that under super knob it controls the cutoff, it controls the volume, it controls the insert EQ1 gain. So actually the super knob will make the sound fatter in this case but all these parameters can be controlled so you have like a wide range of things that you can control. Right, and they can be positive and negative amounts you by can, differing depths as well. Absolutely, you can have your uh, curve type, you can have the ratio, you can have it uh, unipolar or bipolar, and you can edit the curve. But not only that, because basically this is a macro controller, this controls 
all those eight, it's actually eight, if you press this one more time, you will yeah, see you this, and layers. then you get the two layers. So these are the assignable controllers. These can control all of them. The best way to show you that is by going right here, and you can see that it controls all of them. Now I can say that maybe I want uh, the assignable controller number one to start from this point and add to this point, okay, or I can actually that reverse right. that, ah. so it will do the exact opposite of what everything else does. And can, can you get it to kick in only at a certain range as well? Do you see what I mean? So it, only actually, so it doesn't do anything until it gets to here. Yes, you can do that when you adjust the curves. So you can have the curve being completely, uh, you know, and nothing, and nothing happens oh. until you reach that point and then it jumps straight to the value that you set. That's a pretty so, deep programming now, right, okay. It's, it's pretty deep and that's why some people think, okay, super knob, I don't know, how can I program it? But to be perfectly honest, when the montage was launched, you really had to dig deep in order to program the super knob, but now it's really just a click away. So if you want to control your reverb, you just go on your reverb send, press control assign, and then you go straight to your and super I saw, um, and At the New York event, we saw a lot of people using uh, foot controllers to access oh, the super knob yep, as well, right? Yep. And that's, that's just simple. Actually, you've got one just here. That's, that's the one. This is the FC7. And this is, if you connect it to the foot controller too, it's pretty much set and go. It's uh, controlling the super knob um, from the factory. Right. So you don't even have to set it up. You don't even have to go into the settings. It controls the super knob. So you can have like an expression controller and the one at the same time, uh, if right. you have three oh, yes. feet. I also notice you've got the iPad set up here as well, which is, uh, yes. this is something that wasn't touched on in New York either. Right? Um, that's, uh, that's a very, very cool feature. And again, you know, there are so many things that the Modix can do that it's really hard to talk about all of them at the same time. But this is an audio interface for Mac, PC. It works on pretty much any platform. But it can also work as an audio interface and MIDI controller for your iPad. In this case, I'm using Cubasis. Um, this is the latest version. And not only you can record audio, so if I hit record right there, I can start recording. And I can, let's see. Right, so you can uh, it'd be an audio source, right? Yeah. Exactly. And now you can see what I recorded straight away That's right quite, there. quite jazzy. I'd yeah. Say. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I like jazz. And, and and the other thing you can do is, of course, record media. And then, of course, when you record media, you can edit it uh, into the iPad. And that goes all through one single USB cable. No setup required. The iPad picks it up straight away. And, um, yeah, and basically you have a MIDI sequencer, an audio sequencer on your... Um, Modi X. All we need now is for it to charge the iPad while you host, while you connect it. Can we have that as well, please? Let's pray to Apple. I guess, I guess we could use one of those uh, funny dongles with the, you know. Yeah, I mean there are ways around it, but I mean like an iPad can last for a long time, even when running uh, some, uh, you know, something like Cubase. And now the fact that you can have some really pro audio plugins, you have like Fab Filter, the Pro Q, yeah, the AU3 all these things. You know, this is becoming like a very powerful tool. So all this combined, you can record media, record um, audio. Actually, the Modi X is designed to do that very well because you also have a USB volume monitor knob right here. Right, so, so could we run virtual instruments in that and bring them back in? Exactly. Right. For example, I have a Moog uh, Model 15 right here, so I can play it through. I use the Modi X as a MIDI keyboard right now. So let's open the interface. And the return is coming back through this. Yeah, through this. So this is the sound from the Modi X, it's the bass that I played you just before. And now I can bring in the sound of the iPad. So right. I can blend between those two sounds very easily. But also, it's a, it's a MIDI controller, and that's a very big thing for the iPad because you can only have one device at a time. So you have audio sorted, and you also have the MIDI. So you can actually enjoy those nice instruments that you can have on the iPad right now. That's so, really, uh, that's uh, quite an important thing. So um, we've got the, is this the 88 here? This is the 88, uh, so it's the Modi X8. We also have the 7, which is more like um, uh, for keyboard players that want a little bit more range, you know, for piano players. That's the 76, isn't it, the 7? 7? 76, yes. So you do uh, 88, 76 and 61, is that? And the 61. 61, I, I guess it's more for people that want like a compact FM synthesizer, but it also has all these great kind of acoustic sounds and, and all these things. But all of them, you know, honestly, they're super light. Like even this one, it's 
you won't believe how light it is. And the keybits feel really, really nice. Excellent. Don, thank you very much. And Thanks a lot. A bit more information on the Modi X. Absolutely. App. See you next time. See you. Bye bye, guys.